people. Now what is a non, what is aberrant? And aberrant means abnormal, unusual, unnatural. So the, the, the goal of the Moors was to go up into Europe, set up the universities, teach enormous amounts of information. People say, well, why did they have to teach the European information? Number one, we understood prophecy. We have the Book of Enoch. We have the Hermetic text coming out of Egypt that knew we was going to go into slavery 5,000 years before it happened. We have had several prophecies, even some prophecies that was lost. So, when the Arabs invaded, which was the last invasion of Egypt, and they invaded um, Kemet, those Egyptian priests took all of the existing knowledge and went under the banner of Islam. These are these Moorish priests. Now try to understand the science. They can use a religion like a political party. So that you, in, in, in the Democratic Party, you might have several people Blacks, whites, Latinos, you see what I'm saying? It's a political party. Well, they can do the same thing with a religion. So these Egyptian priests would use Islam because they understood it was a conquering force to go up into Europe to supplant all of this ancient wisdom. They understood one thing. If these Europeans did not get this wisdom when we went to sleep, when we woke up out of sleep, things would have been lost. So they gave this particular information to the Europeans to preserve the information while we went to sleep. That that's exactly what happened. Call it slavery, call it deterioration, or what have you, we went to sleep. So to preserve that particular information, they had to go and teach these people for 700 years to preserve this information. So one thing they did here is, one of the other things they had to do to make a non aboriginal people is the Moors had to spread their seed. Now listen to this story. They had to spread their seed to make an offspring of a, of a, of a semi-original people. You get semi from. <laughs> now, some of the original ones of that offspring of that seed was those Oxanasi Jews. Which one was the original? Oxanasi Jews. No, uh, uh, the faith. Huh? Yeah, 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 but no, I'm talking about the faith Jew as opposed to the black Jew. But the original Jew, the Ashkenazi, is the original white Jew. Right, right. That one had a black seed in it because it was the progeny of the Moors. Because not only did they give them this information, converted them into the faith, they had offspring by these women. And after the Moors was ousted, in 1492, they took 500 years trying to wash that seed out, which led to the final solution of the Nazi concentration camps, which was financed by the head Jews that was the ones that so-called purified themselves or was converted Jews of a white strain, they got rid of the black strain in the concentration camps. This is new information. Now I want you to get, to understand how this process is done, to understand how this process is done, there was a movie that came out in 1992 called Rabbit Proof Fence. Rabbit Proof Fence. It's about how you take the Australians, the Aborigines, you take a group of these Aborigines and you sequester them and make them marry white people. And then you take that group and make them only mate with a white person. Until you keep on until you get it, until you what they call breed the so-called black strain out. But you can never breed that black strain out. Queen Elizabeth and they were mad about that to this day. Because Queen Charlotte, when she got when, 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 when her mother got screwed by that more, so they could trace their shit back to Seville. Queen Elizabeth, that whole bloodline up until Queen Elizabeth.
super now got a black screen in it. And that's why they mad with Islam. That's what this whole fight is about. Islam under the Moors made them niggas. You can't never get that tainted blood out of you. So, so they bred these abolitionists out. Now that's now in the new movement, Australia. So one came out, Rabbit Proof Fence, which gives you the definitive thing, in 2002, Rabbit Proof Fence. The other one came out in 08, Australia, this was past summer. And in there they bred from black to white up until 1973 with the Australian line. So the Jews from 18, from, 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 from 1492 up until the concentration camp, 1940, or 41, whenever they started taking them on the trains, they tried to rewhiten themselves. But that last black strain, the head of the Jewish white nation, got in cahoots with Hitler, who was a Jew, and they killed off, they sent that last black strain of the Moors to the concentration camps. We even suspect this happened in Russia. Because you got a more, because we're trying to find out how did that Islamic line get up in Russia? That's a Moorish line. And remember, Alexander Pushkin, who is the father of the history of Russia, he, was, he said that all things were black. And he was all things Russian. And so Stalin said, kill millions of Russians. Anytime you hear they kill millions of Russians, they killed, they had ethnic cleansing of a black stream. That's right. That's right. You see, of a black stream. Now, as a result, y'all all right? Yeah. Okay, let me show you how stuff backfires. The ancient art of Isis worship is called Wicca. Wise woman. It comes from the word bitch, bitch, priestess of the dog star. They worship a goddess named Hecate. Let me get my glasses. Shit. <laughs> 40 plus. 40, when you hit 40, you can hurt yourself just by waking up and stretching. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm 47. I'm going to say me, Barack Obama, Eddie Murphy, Lawrence Fishburne, Forrest Whitaker, all that 1961. George Clooney, Meg Ryan. I'm going to commend George Clooney because he was one of the ones that made that. He was one of the only ones that did a whole documentary on the Dark Force thing on HBO and the genocide. You see what I'm saying? They said there's going to be people that don't look like you that's going to come to help you. In the book of Enoch, they said when these people come to help you, do not turn away from these people. There are going to be some white people going to show up that's, that, to help you, but if you judge them based on the way they look, you miss the benefits. You see what I'm saying? Because every day, the people who kill you look like you. They done killed a thousand, no, they done killed over a hundred damn children in Chicago since January. They killed 37 last month alone. Niggas killing each other. Shooting up each other. You see? So I said, I'm not wasting no more energy on, on, on eight shit niggas. But what does that mean? You know, in the Afrocentric thing, we born, or we in prison, we that, we that. But we always knew in our community we had a group of people going somewhere, and we always had some eight shit niggas. You know, it ain't got nothing to do with economics. It could be your own brother, your own family. You see what I'm saying? So, I'm, I don't bleed my heart now, burning up energy on some niggas that ain't supposed to be nothing. You see what I'm saying? Killing up each other. You see what I'm saying? Like that. Now we march down to Gina, Texas, for one black guy who was beating black motherfuckers ass before he fucked around and fucked that white boy up. He was beating black men ass, and then he messed around and hit that white boy the wrong way, and then dealt with his ass. And we marched down to Gina, Texas for that shit, and yet they done had 37 black people die in the last month in Chicago. They had four babies last week got shot with AK-47. Babies, women, 
And ain't nobody know answer to that shit. You think I'm gonna get on a bus and go to Gino, Texas for some old ragged ass nigga? Who ain't shit? You know that nigga ain't shit. Y'all like this boy and say, well, why you picking on him? That nigga was beating, they said this guy was a bully, he was beating up black people's ass. He fucked around and hit that white boy around and the white people said, oh no, we're gonna deal with this shit. You march on buses, and yet they have 37 black people get black children, get their black women, all kinds of people died in Chicago last month. And a hundred since damn January, and you ain't even shit about it. That's why I don't get on no bus for no niggas or whatever. <laughs> See what I'm saying? We burn up too much energy on fucked up niggas. Now the book of Eagles said there's gonna be some white people gonna come to help you. And don't throw the book out of the bathwater. Don't throw the baby out of the bathwater. Because right now, this shit's so messed up down on the planet Earth, it ain't about no race, it's about the separation of those who have consciousness and those who don't. Just like the Matrix said, those people plugged into the Matrix is your enemy. Although they may look like you, they're your enemy too. Right now, it's based on who has consciousness and who don't. And them niggas who don't have consciousness is dangerous. And you know what? White folks suffering with the same thing. They, they got to deal with all kinds of evangelists, scribes, and stuff. And they're like, man, that ain't what time it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they're going through that whole thing. You see, so this thing right now is about who knows the information and the keys. Because what's rolling right now is world domination. Right. You see what I'm saying? And you believe how uh, some old nigga that's gonna shoot your son the next day. Man, I done got so many calls from mothers talking about they son got their head blown off by another nigga outside of Because the generation now that's 18 and 19, they threw deep that if your generation was messed up, and they call that generation X, that's the niggas in their 30s. Now, what you think about the ones 18 and 19? They just straight up zombie killers. You see what I'm saying? So, moving back on what we're talking about here is. Um, they talk about some people coming to help you, and I'm going to tell you this part what they're talking about. In Australia, because they messed around and tried to breed out the Australians to 1973, they got a lot of white people with the black gene. And as a result, as a result, they got This white girl here, uh, white girl here, tricks her lineage back to Kimmy. All of it look a certain way you don't know. Now, I say, well, how the hell could this be? Her name is Deborah Gray. Her name is Deborah Gray. She got a tape out called Wish Upon a Spell. She was the ninth witch of the chief. She's the top witch in Australia. Australia has, in 2000, they had 60,000 Australians into the occult and witchcraft. When they took the census in 2006, there was 100,000 Australians in the occult and witchcraft. Now they are scared because they understand that they're back some of those, they, got, they tried to breathe out the aborigines so much until they got so much black mixed up in their gene. So they can't tell what it is, but all of them look white. But they into this witchcraft. They into the occult. And they traced it, and, and, they, and they revealed it. They said the most highest god is the Egyptian gods, or the Canaanite beings. And this white girl here is like the head witch over most of them. Her name is Devil Gray. This, 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 this DVD is called Wish Upon a Spell. Wish upon a spell. You know, she got shit in there how to get a hood, how to get a soulmate. But all this shit works too. Now, uh, uh, all this stuff works. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is they run amok when they try to breed out those aborigines. They can never get rid of that damn black gene. They just produce a lot of white, black people that look white. And as a result, they got the, the spirit realm sitting the most amount of witches and occultists in one country. They got 100,000 of them. It's the fastest growing, just 
not everybody's a man in the church. So they even have an evangelist here. On Larry King, like he's a big time man. You can't think of his name. He got a big mega church white boy. They said, oh, you can, and Larry King said, are you concerned? He said, it's thousands of white people are going into the occult. They wrote psychic readings, astro astronomy, astrology, ceremonial magic. And the white guy said, uh, no, I ain't upset because there's thousands of them coming to my church. He said that because he knows he's into that shit. <laughs> Not only the preachers be talking all against that. So there's, so there's, 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 there's hundreds of these people that's, 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 uh, that's, that's going into this particular information. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, so to show you how that reading process can back up, can back up on me. Y'all all right? Let me get my notes right quick. I don't want to miss nothing. Don't want to miss nothing. Um, um, we gotta, let me get some fresh stuff. Now, it's interesting here because they, they worship a deity. They worship a deity. A moon goddess that sets over all, which is called Hecate. She's called Hecate in Egypt. Hecate in Phoenicia, Phoenician goddess, which you call Carthage and all of that. And later on, she was Hecate in Greek and Rome. And that's why the Europeans worship her. She's a moon deity, but she's called Hecate in Egypt, a kid. She's also a form of set man. And I'm going to read something to you here. Because like I said, they translated a lot of the papyruses uh, uh, into Greek and Latin. The last 100 years of the Egyptian temples. Uh, uh, before the last Egyptian temple, the Temple of Isis had feet they closed. I'm going to read something here of the god that all the witches worship. This goddess is called Old Mistress Hecate. She's a female of Anubis. Anubis is the god of the crossroads, and Hecate is the goddess of the crossroads. She has a book out called The Rotting Goddess. I don't know the name of the people, but you just write The Rotting Goddess. There's a book on her. The Rotting Goddess. Hecate. And they, and, and, and they say she's equivalent to the leg bar, the god of the crossroads. She's the goddess of the crossroads. So they say, oh, Mistress Hecate, oh, lady of the crossroads. Now she's the goddess of all the wishes worship. And the word witch comes from the word bitch and comes from the word bitch, priestess of the dog star. That's the form of Isis, of Aset. So you know, I said has a half of it, 180 names. You see. So this is a form of I said, the moon phase of I said. So she would be a form of Neptunes, the black Isis, a Neptune, the sister, who's the mother of Anubis. She's the moon deity. She's called Hakati in the Phoenician. And it says, O lady of the crossroads, O black bitch. Now you're reading a translation of a papyrus, the spell of attracting and performing the heroes, the heroes of the gladiators or something like that. This is the papyrus, this is the book. This is the book that's to throw you off. This is the mass production of, of, of the Egyptian papyruses that was translated by the Egyptian priests. It is called the Greek Magical Papyri in translation. This is the one that all the occultists use. You don't know nothing about it, I'm throw you off. You just an Egyptian man, you're gonna turn against all things Greek and you don't understand. This is used this way to throw you off. Because it was translated into Greek and Latin, but it is the Egyptian papyrus of the magical papyrus. You see, the, G the Greek, Magical papyrus in translation edited by Hans H A N S Dieter D A D I E T E R Hans Dieter D I E T E R Dieter well and his last name is Bess B E T Z Hans Dieter Bess the Greek magical papyri in translation 
So this was a mass volume of Egyptian magical text. But they put it under the Greek thing because they translated it in that, but they put it under that so you don't go up in it. And this is all other stuff up in here. There's maybe 20 other spells up in here. You see what I'm saying? Spells for everything and you just work. They got a spell that say do what you want. Or anything you want. They got a spell that get to get rid of anything that is messing with you. You see what I'm saying? Not, not necessarily kill you, but if you show love, let a nigga get out your face. You see? So, I'm just trying to say, uh, but you hear that word, old black bitch? That's powerful. You get mad and stuff, but that's, that's the highest level of our set. And this is the Egyptian translation. Oh, Hecate, old black bitch. It's, it's fitting I say this on Mother's Day, because it means priests of the dog star. The dog star is called the soul of Isis, our set. The soul of our set. You see, y'all right? Yes. This is some powerful stuff. This is some powerful stuff. We're going to move it right along. Uh, move it right along. I'm going to leave out nothing. Move it right along. Now, I'm going to read something to you right now. Let's break down some stuff. I'm going to take this angel dictionary and you show you how you read this stuff. If you read this stuff as formulas and understand you can unlock the keys. So we're going to turn to, we're going to turn to the God Samuel. I'll show you. Show you how you read stuff. The God Samuel. The God Samuel was originally thought of as an angel of death, considered to be an evil angel in Jerusalem. Samuel means blind God, and it means arrogant. The, the Gnostics considered ignorance being the seed of evil. Because Samuel was considered a fallen angel, this is an alternative reason for Samuel's name, Blind God. Now let me translate this stuff for you. Because Horus is also called the Blind God. The Blind God. So we're going to break down one of the great mysteries of all time in a few seconds. You get ready to miss out. Ask me. You leave it out in the middle? Okay. All right. Well, this is some very important stuff right here. It shows you how you go up in churches and you preach against yourself. This is very important. Now follow me on this so we can break some mysteries here. Anyway, in so many words, Samuel is considered Satan. Now, so we're going to deal with that. I know it's something when that damn sound was coming on while I was reading this. Anything to distract you. Now, let's go to this word right here. What the hell is that? I think it's coming from the microphone. Oh, well, it's coming from me. Oh, okay, yeah, shit. I'm talking junk and I'm the sauce. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. Now, all right, now let's, let's deal with this. Yeah. Bible. And all of a sudden now, because you, you, you 
go, oh, the Bible is this. Jesus is real. But now all of a sudden, when you get up against the wall, you got to deal with the ordinary Christ because it's going to reveal too much. He is believed to live in the third hell. I'm tiny. Well, why you got all this information on the motherfucker? He don't exist. Pine are more than likely to be that be the same angel. Pine and Pineo is more than likely to be the same angel. The Zohar, which is the Kabbalistic text brought up by Moses de Leon to, uh, by, by the Moors in Spain, said that Samuel is the angel who fought with Jacob at Pine so if you break these things down in a medical terminology or formula, the black substance that they talk about is what Jacob wrestled with. That was Samuel, the god of the dead. Melanin is nothing but DNA, and DNA is what? Previous ancestral material. You got DNA, two strains, and then you got a whole bunch of others that they can't explain what they call that junk DNA. Junk DNA. They can't explain it. In India, it's called Kala, K-A-L-A. Watch out, we're going to go into that in a few minutes. But they call it junk DNA. And I'm going to reveal something to you tonight. It's going to show who you are and where you are. And the only thing I can tell you right now, you are a projection of yourself somewhere in the sky. They say that we are not local. There's something that's projecting you from the sky and dreaming you up. And you're trying to figure out who you are, but you are somewhere else. In another dimension. We say the sky, but they talk about another dimension. This is amazing stuff. We're gonna get into this tonight. We're gonna break some great missions. Y'all all right? Yeah. Now, what this is saying is Jacob wrestled with the angel. The angel is melanin. The angel is called Samuel. In India, Samuel is called Sam Star. A black substance called Akasha. He wrestles with the angel all night, and at daybreak, he's called Pineal. He sees the face of God called Pineal. Harvest means great face. Hero means great face, the face of God. And both of those are talking about Pineal land. So, in so many words, Samuel, which is melanin, and pineal, which they also say is Samuel, is the pineal gland. It's nothing but a combination of melanin and the pineal, which is called light brain. The melanin produced the, 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 the melanin is, is going through the pineal um, gland to produce light. Light brain. Lucifer is the light brain. Lucifer is the pineal gland. Light is called angels of light, which is angels of light. The angels are the angels is light. In this particular case, it's produced on high, it's produced by the pineal gland. So these particular arch angels are now coming back because now we have the light Produced in the pineal gland, and they need to feed from it to be one with us. As a result, they help us, but they need to be energized. We're going to question and answer whatever uh, when, we, when we deal with that. Hmm? You got it? Yeah, they need to be energized. It's called angels of light. Now, so. They got this angel as pineal, and this is an excellent book, Encyclopedia of Angel by Richard Webster and all. But he has four other books, Gabriel, um, Michael, Haniel, no, Gabriel, Michael, Uriel, and Raphael. And, and, and Raphael. 
You see what I'm saying? Now everything, don't, see, the thing about it, everything don't have to come with an Egyptian terminology because you got to realize we were all these family members all over the world. It was one black people. So that it's not like somebody made up something outside of this evil. They even say it all. First of all, let's look at this part now. Most of the ancient world, even John Henry Clark told you this. If you were to go back to Rome and Greece, you might see two white people walking around with a whole group of black people. This whole white ancient world is something that was created the last 100 years. Half the Greek statues and stuff was built in the 1800s. Built in the late 1800s. This is a fabrication. So even the, even the Greeks, which I, you go to Greek town in, 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 in Detroit, and the Greeks look like this brother here, Dennis, is calling this man in the camera. He said, my family's always been there. And why is it that Charles Fitch tells you that the Greeks have 85% sickle cell rate? That's right. You can't have sickle cell unless you got melanin. Mm -hmm. It's another blood type that is only malfunctions outside of this environment. So sickle cell only comes about when you get the wrong diet after living outside of your environment. They got Africans now coming down with sickle cell and only been in this damn country 10 years and they're 40 years old now and never had it before then. But the diet changed and as a result, the, the, the blood cells react different. Got nothing to do with no uh, 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 sickle cell is some kind of deficiency. No, it's, 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 it's not a deficiency. It is a malfunction based on something that is not that's out of this environment. But the, the Greeks have 80% sickle cell. We talk about a fabrication of black cultures that went on, of white cultures, and a fabrication against the black culture that went on for the past 1,000 years. You see what I'm saying? So there is nothing out in the true reading and stuff has nothing to do with white folks. White folks couldn't speak. So how can they create the Greek language? You see what I'm saying? That's the black language, and that's what I'm trying to say. There's nothing that's advanced out here. You see, it didn't come from us. Now, let's go into a couple of other things. Let's go into a couple of other things right quick. Um, what we want to deal with right now is um, the deal with some things. Now, I showed this picture in New York. I, I, I later on got a little bit more research on it. Uh, I showed this picture in New York before Christmas. Uh, it is a picture. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, I might have to break down and start getting me some power coming. <laughs> you know, and shit like that. You know, but I don't even know a computer, so, you know. But anyway, this is Osiris, uh, Osa, and he's being offered a duck. The duck has an oil to it. You eat the duck, and what happens is melanin goes throughout the central nervous system. But you have to trap it. And how you trap melanin is you eat certain substances and certain oils or certain things to trap the melanin clusters. And once you trap the melanin clusters, you can do what, what you, you can, it can create several things that you can work with. It's almost like um, sacred mushrooms. It's almost what marijuana used to do before you start smoking it every damn day. You see what I'm saying? They used to go and take an ice, a, a regular cube of, of, of sugar, and go on, and just like taking a, a, taking a hit of crack. But if your diet didn't consist of sugar, sugar would be just like a boost, just like crack would be. And the priests used to take sugar when they wanted to go to a high spiritual element. You see what I'm saying? But if your diet consists of that all the time, then, you see what I'm saying, it's going to be different for you. So they used to take, they used to take the dumb oil, and he's offering the duck to Osiris. If they are supposed to eat duck, why the hell is it offering to Osiris they say for God? You see, so he used to take this stuff and they kept it so it's a, it's a symbol to try to tell you how to get the spiritual attainment. You eat the duck. You know, black people, you know, we don't eat, 
You know, some of us eat duck, most of us eat duck sauce all our life and never had no duck. You didn't know that duck sauce was for ducks. You give me some duck sauce, you put it on some, on a fucking spring roll, uh, 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 uh you know, on, on a spring roll, uh, uh, egg roll. You think that's what it was? No, it was for duck. You see what I'm saying? But, they used to do it to trap the melody and for healing. Now, we know that some of y'all ain't gonna eat no duck, some of you vegetarians and all that. So the modern equivalent of that is hemp seed oil. So get you some hemp seed oil, which has, which is the root of, of, of marijuana. Just don't have a TAC, but you can get some hemp seed oil and you can trap the melanin in the hemp seed oil. And you can do all kind of healing with hemp seed oil. But you want to get the one from Whole Foods because it's a dark green one, like Osiris. Like Osiris. You see what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's a dark green one, like Osiris. So, I want to show you this other thing right here. There was a sister, she's a singer named Rapunzel. Uh, I came by the house and we did a little, uh, a little lecture at the crib. And she mentioned that she was pregnant about a year ago. And she was concerned because the doctor gave her conflicting things about the baby when they took the sonogram and put fear in her that something might be wrong. So she was worried about the baby. Now, she was worried about the baby. So the baby sent her a message in the womb. Now, first of all, they got several levels of the human beings from the last 50 to 56, 57, 60 years. First of the baby boomers from the early 50s to the late 40s on up into the 70s, and they were called light bringers. Then the 70s child was called the indigo children. And the indigo children lasted from the 70s to the 90s. And then, but each, each, each level uh, lasts a little short. So, so, so the light bringers last close to from the 50s, about 20 years, and then maybe about 15 or something years you had the, you know, the, the indigo children lasted roughly about 20 years too, and then it sped up. For the indigo children lasted from the 70s to the 90s, and then the 90s children are called crystal children. And they lasted from the 90s up until the 2000s, and then the millennium children are called rainbow children. Each generation, these children get more advanced. And you can look at a child might say something to you that you didn't say until you were 17 or 18. You're like, damn, that child at 10 years old and it gave a scenario. And I said, I didn't say that kind of shit until I was 17 or 18 years old. And they get younger and younger and smarter and smarter. There's a backside to that, a downside to that, too. I'll tell you what that is. Meant. But the rainbow children, you see what I'm saying, are the, are the other ones. Now this rainbow child, which is the ones that are on the scene now, sent this mother a message, not the word, that it's going to be all right. I'll show you the sonogram, and maybe you can make out what it is. This is a baby's head, holding up a thumb saying, I'm okay, mother. <laughs> you see this shit here? Yeah. She came to the house and it was a color picture. I should have told her that they made a black and white, but they could have made a color one from a color copy. But anybody see that? Yeah. The baby, when they took the sonogram, the baby, this rainbow child, is up in the womb looking at the mother and holding up the hand saying, I'm okay, holding up the phone. We deal with some real spiritual stuff that's going on. You see what I'm saying? Now, I wanted to bring that to the exhibit. Y'all all right? Okay. I wanted to show you that. Moving right along. Let's see where we're going. Let's see where we're going. Hold on one minute. Let's see, uh, let's see some other things here. I don't want to miss, uh, miss out on anything. Um, anyway, let me get my notes so I can. I don't want to miss out on nothing. Um, um, I'm going to get my notes so. Uh, uh, let me show you what the spirit world did. You got spirits that's coming back to correct stuff. Now, this is what happened recently. 
Uh, this is what happened recently. Um, they had this doc on this documentary program. They had this thing. Always trying to uh, white folks was always trying to take history and make it their own, or try to alter history to favor them. So they had a whole thing on the Bee Gees and their impact on disco. And so they had Nile Rodgers, they had a couple of people on the Nile Rodgers and a couple of people that was like, well, you know. But they did say, well, this stuff came from black dance music that was always had black dance music. They've always had black dance music and somehow the white boy just basically took it and put it with his technology. You see what I'm saying? You know, with that monotonous type sound to extend it and made the disco out of it. But they said it all came together with the Bee Gees and they tried to be like they were the pioneers of this stuff. So, the sister Burke, a hat shack who used to do, she, she used to bring me to New York in the 90s. She's a, responsible for uh, uh, um, first uh, bringing uh, Phil Valentine out. You know, he, he opened for um, Delbert Blair. He, he'd been doing teaching for years in New York, but he nationally became known when he opened for Delbert Blair. And so she was the one that was uh, responsible for bringing a lot of the, 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 the metaphysical stuff to New York, thus really opening up for the rest of the country. She's one of the pioneers of that. She used to be a DJ in the 70s. And so she told me this story on how, this is what I'm going to tell you how stuff does redirect and how spirit does stuff. She told me this story on how white folks couldn't dance. And the person who taught them to dance was Van McCoy when he wrote The Hustle. So they started learning that hustle. And once they learned the hustle, you got a lot of white boys, they can't dance, they don't want to participate. So they learned the hustle. And two years, so he wrote the hustle in late 74, maybe early 75. So two years later, when the Bee Gees come along with Saturday Night Fever, which the soundtrack, you know, it's a good soundtrack, don't get me wrong, that shit. You do use some good shit. But let's tell it like it is. By that time, by that time, the uh, white folks have been hustling for about two, three years. And then, so their confidence was up. And then this is what started the Studio 54 and they could really get there and dance. But it was the hustle and Van McCoy who started them on their track for dancing. Now, one of the first disco records extended play was Keep On Trucking Eddie Kendricks. You see, which the extended play came from James Brown, you used to have that 45 in the song, double up and flipped on the other side of that 45. So he's the original disco man, but one of the original disco songs that said, with, with studied the template, was Eddie Kendricks Keep On Trucking, and the, the violins that later on became synonymous with disco came from the Philly International Sound who was putting violins in their music. So they took Keep On Trucking, they took the violins from Philly International, put that together for a dance track, then Eddie, then Van McCoy came and did the hustle to teach them how to dance. So they had a culture that was birthed with the pioneers of black people, and then by the time the Bee Gees get there, they dancing and all, and they get credited for being the motherfucking forerunners of a disco. So what happened was the night that they the night that they aired last, uh, 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 not this Friday night, but Friday before last, they aired this thing on the, what is called a documentary channel, calling the Bee Gees the impact of disco. But a few hours before it aired at 12 o'clock on Friday night, I was in a damn flea market. And, and, I, and I bought an album for 40 something cent. 47 cent and it was a Van McCoy album. Bought the album, went home, watched the documentary about the Bee Gees, and then the other day, I had a sign it because I got about like a thousand albums. So I got to get around to play them. So I, so I took the album out, put it on the turntable, and was playing it. With the headphones on, because I, I get up, I, 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 I get the two shots, 
at night, put on the headphones and jam. Or I'll get up in the morning, get me two shots and jam. And go to another level. So, I was jamming this music and he came through. And I said, because he, he died in 1979. So I said, well, look, I want to know that they kill you. So I had to wait till this reader got home that night, uh, 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 this particular person who tell me. And I said, did he call his brother through? I said, did they kill you? And he said, absolutely not. So I'm saying, well, what's the deal? Why did you come? And what he was trying to say was, look, I was the pioneer of this stuff. And so what they attributed the Bee Gees for the impact, that was me. And that record needs to be straight. So I'm just trying to show you how things are so those particular spirits come through. Let me give you another example. I was in college. Remember if anybody saw the movie on um, the movie about the guy who ate at McDonald's for a month or ate at McDonald's? How many months? Supersized me and got hooked on McDonald's. Was it, no, it was McDonald's. It was McDonald's. But that's the truth channel because I'm going to tell you what happened. You, you mentioned Burger King, but let me tell you what happened. I had a friend that was in school with me back in the day. He was the SJ president at Clark Atlanta University in his last year. Before he graduated, all he ate for a year was a Burger King that was up the street from the school. He ate a Whopper. He, he, he ate a double Whopper with cheese for a year. Every day. Or most of the time. So I, I went up through up to New York because I was doing the shoe design thing and I went to go get my shoes from this Jew guy in New York and stuff and, 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 and find out what, what designs on, the, 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 they made for my shoes with the magic designs on the paper. So I flew back to, to, to Atlanta and I saw Whitney and Whitney was a stick, a skeleton. I said, man, what the fuck happened to you? Because I left about two months. He said, well, I was eating Burger King for a year. I started losing weight. We went to the doctor, and the doctor said you were systematically starving yourself with malnutrition. Okay? Now, and so he said, you know, I said, okay, then. So we knew what the problem was. Then, when he kick, when you go visiting them doctors, you're going to find something. They down and dog, wake up with sleeves, with, with, with fleas. So he decided that he was skinny. The doctors put him on the AZT. That's what kills when they call it AIDS. And he ended up dying in 1990. So they murdered him. And that's what the woman in Africa said. She's, there, was a, there was a voodoo priest in Africa that diagnosed people from the spirit world. She said she's never seen anything called AIDS. She said she's seen people come with other diseases and they end up calling it AIDS and they kill them with the AZT. Well, that's what they did with my boy with me. They killed the brother. So let me tell you what happened about the spirit world. Um, I, don't even, I don't even eat the burgers. I was riding down the street about a month ago, and we passed by the Burger King where he used to eat every day. It was over there where the schools are. Clark, Morehouse, Morris Brown, Atlanta University, uh, uh, and, and Spelman and all that. I said, pull into that Burger King. We pull into the Burger King, the girl ordered a big fish, and I ordered a double, the spirit told me to order a double waffle with cheese. All that double walk with cheese. The spirit told me to do it. I'm gonna tell you what happened. We go to some other store and Linda gets out to go in this store and buy something. And when she come back, I'm in heaven. I'm in another zone. I'm eating this shit. I, I'm eating this shit and I'm about to kill myself. And I'm like, I'm like sedated. I'm in a whole other zone. She said, God damn, what the hell is the matter with you? But I, but I had tapped into the stuff with Whitney, and his spirit, you see what I'm saying, was merging, and we was having this particular moment together. See what I'm saying? He's been dead since 1990. You see? So it was almost like an ancestral type thing. The burger was symbolic of that stuff, but since he was since he was dealing with that, you see what I'm saying? That's what happened. I'm trying to show you some stuff that you have. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Because all this has to do with melody. Now listen.
listen to this. They got a burger place. Y'all all right? Yeah. Okay. They got a place in Tennessee, in Memphis, Tennessee. It's a burger shack that Clinton ate at, Bush Sr. ate, Bush Jr. ate, Reagan, Jimmy Carter, Bobby Kennedy, Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon, uh, 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 Robert, Robert, Robert Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, and they ate this thing. And I'm like, well, what's the deal? And what they go, they go in this place, they deep fry a hamburger. Then they take the hamburger, they take the cheese and put it in the grease, put on the hamburger, and then take a bun and put it on top of a greasy cheese and the, the, the grease melt into the bun. And it's one big grease burger. And all the presidents eat this thing. I'm gonna try to understand something about alchemy. Alchemy is the study of melanin and everything in the universe. The reason why they eat this thing, the reason why they eat this thing is this. Look, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. They go to this grease place and they eat a greasy burger because the grease that they cook the burger in, they didn't cook the broke burgers in since 1918. <laughs> Now, they, what they do is to clean the grease, they ball the grease, and they strain the grease, but they got big ass vats in a vault. But the grease, they've been cooking in this grease since 1918. Since 1918. And what it is, the properties of the different eras in this grease take you to another dimension. Now, um, this ain't far set from what your family used to do. Remember you used to get that grease can? Yeah. And you cook that grease, and your mama and them say, nah, that grease is just right. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. And you didn't have no disease or nothing. Mm. Because remember when they cooked with love, and everything that they cooked like the business was trapped in that grease. Me, you remember that? Y'all remember that shit? Some of y'all got the grease can going on right now. That's an old slave methodology that these white people done tapped into that came from black people. And that grease was holistic. It might have been some Crisco Lolly. The only thing fucking up is fish. You can't cook fish in it. Because everything going to happen. Even Barack Obama might go through there. But it's the properties in the grease that's been around since what? I, over 100 years, 1918? Huh? How many years is that? About 90 some years? Huh? Yeah. So, this is what, so, so it's, it, it's, it's talking about those particular properties, those particular properties in that particular grease. You see what I'm saying? But um, that's not far fetched. That um, dealing with something old, bringing it into the future, and you tap into a whole a whole other ring. You see what I'm saying? So I, I just want to um, um, deal with that. Now let's see. What we're going to deal with right now is um, an angel. Let's deal with this Dogon mystery first. Get to deal with some new Dogon mysteries. We know the Dogon tribe, this is coming from the conversation of Ogun the Melly's book. Uh, and also, this is also in the serious mystery, I think. This is, this, these people are not trans, these are ancestors now for these things. I think this conversation of Ogun the Melly was in the 1930s with Marseille, um, um, uh, Jermaine Dickerman and Marcel Brio in the book, um, one of the books is The Pale Fox with Noho and yeah, The Pale Fox, which you can still get. The new book 
It's two new books. The Science of the Dough God that came out about three, four years ago. Uh, let me see what year. And a new one called The Signs of the Dogon. Is that uh I think it's called The Signs of the Dogon. Um this one came out in 19 um, in 2006. His name is Lane Layer Stranton. Science of the Dogon is a new one he got out called The Signs of the Dogon, where they trace the Dogon language and all that back to hieroglyphics. Extraordinary book. The, the mystery I want to get into is the cosmology of this. It's the cosmology of the Dogon. But that's Layer Stranton's book, or Scranton's, S C R A N T O N. Layer Stranton's book. And that is um, the, the science of the Dogon. I wanted to show this, but what I'm going to show right now is this.
So one brother said, brother, I believe you called on the radio. Brother, I believe you're one of the fallen angels. I said, if you knew what fallen angels mean, it means humans, you dickhead. You're a fallen angel too. The grandparents are the parents who were overthrown by their children. The parents was old. They became weary and sleepy. The children gained power and overthrew the parents and threw the parents into physical bodies. And they became humans. Now the angels who threw the, our children who threw us into the physical bodies are now old and we have regenerated and we are new. We have the new light and they have to come through us to be regenerated. But the family fight is over. We are all one. Y'all getting this? Just go back and study the tape. Now, it is because in the beginning there was Gaia, but Gaia becomes the earth and the earth becomes the fallen daughter. It means that there was this ancient primordial thing that was in the beginning when it was spiritual and then it fell and gradually took on the physical shape of the human vibratory rate of the physical. So what was spiritual in the beginning gradually fell into the physical and took on the physical appearances. And that is what the great fallen ones are. They took on physical bodies. Those physical bodies became incubators and in a series of reincarnation back and forth from the spiritual bodies, we rested, we regenerated, we shifted out the flaws, and now we have a new light. Now listen to this shit right here. The Book of the Dead, yeah, the Book of the Dead is a template for all other ancient books. In the books of the dead, you have an upper world which is ruled by the gods. Or the angels. You have an underworld which is ruled by the demons. Or Damians, Amians, Amens, hidden substance. That is nothing but the same God souls of the gods trapped into physical bodies. And that's the template. In order for us to regenerate and go through to make a new God, We went through the middle passage. When we went through the middle passage, we became a series.